you're now 68 years old. I'll be 68. You'll be 68. You're 67 years old. Mm -hmm. When you look back on your life, when you look at getting shot three times, all the prison time that you did, uh, and then all the things that we can't really talk about because of statute of limitations and, and so forth, uh, you know, do you feel any level of regret if you had, if you could go back to your 15 year old self and take it a different route? Would you have taken it? No. Or are you happy with the life that you lived? No, I don't think I would have taken it. I don't think I would have taken it. No. This is the way I was brought up. This is the way I was raised. I didn't know any other life. Yeah. This is what this is what was around me seven days a week, three hundred sixty-five days a year. Is there anything you regret at all about the life? The only thing I regret about my life is that, truthfully, that I couldn't save my mother and father because they all died from diseases, from cancer and heart and everything. It's the only thing I regret. That and I couldn't save my animals. And I'd be perfectly calm. I'm an animal lover, I'll be honest with you. That's the only thing. That's the only regrets I have. That's the only regrets I have. Anything I ever done in my life, I done to the same people who were in the same life that I was in, doing the same thing that I was doing. I never messed with legitimate people. Never did. Because legitimate people don't understand something. You want to be with me? Every week you better have that envelope for me. I don't give a damn what go you got to have that envelope for me every week. Because legitimate people, all they know is they like the idea of Oh, this guy is this and this guy's that, and I'm with him. But they don't realize you still got to come up with it every week. There's no, there's no excuse over here. There's no yeah. excuse whatsoever. Now, the thing I clarify, like I do on my tapes, I wrote my book. You're right. I never ratted on anybody, and you can look to all the records you want. I never signed a proffer, like Michael did. Excuse me, but he did, and there's proof on that. I never went into court and testified on anybody. I never gave information on anybody. Nobody ever went to prison on me. Nobody ever got into any trouble for me. I got into trouble twice because why? Well, what people said about me. I wasn't even on the tapes. I got two convictions against me, two different cases because of what people said about me. Not even what I would, they don't even have me on tape talking. And I kept my mouth shut well, all the time. But you know what? This is the end of my life, so to speak, because who knows how many years I got. Before I go, I'm telling my story now, because everybody's telling these stories that are all out of BS. They know about this. They, know, they don't know half of what they're talking about. They don't. Now, is it going to buy me a one-way ticket to heaven? I doubt it very much. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But I'm telling my story now. Well, uh, over the years, I've interviewed a lot of ex-mafia guys, um, you know, from Anthony Arlota to Bobby Luisi to Larry Mazza mm -hmm. uh, to Anthony Russo. Uh, the list goes Wait, on which and Anthony on Russo and on. are you talking about? Anthony Russo from Brooklyn? Yeah. The one that uh, Teddy Pritchard made and then when he got pinched, he gave him up? Uh, part of the Gambinos, right? Oh, no, no, no. This guy was with the Columbos. No, his name was Anthony guy. Russo. They called him a, a different guy. Well, uh, I mentioned all the all the people I just mentioned because I've interviewed them, and at one point in their story, they talk about how, how they cooperated with the feds, mm -hmm. and they gave various reasons. Uh, one reason was that their family was threatened. Another reason was was their partner found right. you know they found out their partner was cooperating. There's always you know, and I've asked them flat out, "Do you consider yourselves rats?" Most people say no, you know, th th there's various reasons and so forth. Right. But ultimately, most people I interview have cooperated, which is why they're, they could say, you know, when I could ask them stories, you know, about murders and so forth, mm -hmm. they could actually lay out, you know, the stories, you know, people right. like John A. Light and stuff like that. Uh, so when you look at people from your point of view that were mob affiliates, and, and some of these people, I don't know if you know them or you know of them or whatever else, but when you look at, people who ultimately were in the mafia, who were made men right. and cooperated. What are your thoughts about them? Oh, I look at it this way. One, they didn't rat on me. I look at it that way, all guys that I knew. But they, like I said, there had to be a reason. I'll give you, for instance, Carmine Persico was hiding out. I was in prison at the time, and he was hiding out 
in a cousin's house, and the FBI caught him there. Now, Michael Bellino, who was Alley Boy Pricicle's bodyguard and chauffeur and everything, I think uh, Michael was still in prison. He wasn't out yet. A couple of guys went to Michael Bellino's house, told his wife and his daughters, your father's a rat, this, that, and whatever. He's no good. And they went on and on and on. We're going to get even. We're going to get even. You come to court. So Michael Bellino's wife went to court. They threatened her and they threatened the daughters to harm them. So they went to court. The trial was going on. And there was a, a what do you call it? You know, they took a break in the trial. And they were going to have the witness and the informant who gave up come my price ago. So when it comes back on, who comes walking out? This guy, Freddie De Christopher, who was a cousin to Carmine to a marriage. Carmine was staying at his house. He gave him up for $50,000 reward. Meanwhile, yeah. the guy, Freddie De Christopher, his wife, who was another wise, who her brother's a big wise guy, who was a cousin to, the, to Carmine and Alley Boy Persico, she fainted. Michael Bellino's mother, uh, she, Michael Bellino's wife and daughters walked out. They sent back an apology to Michael Bellino. And from what I understand, Carmine told Michael, anything you want, we'll give you, we'll give you, we'll take care of you. Michael says, I appreciate, I don't want nothing to do with any of you anymore. When he came out of prison, he went to Florida. They went and threatened his wife. A couple of other times they went and they threatened guys, ex like, uh, say like, a guy, guy's got his wife and he's got his gumada, okay. So he dumps her and he picks up another one, a gumada. So this one here's starting in, guys were going there and beating up the girl. Come on. We freaking see if he's here. We didn't do that in my day. In my day, you're not supposed to do something like that. But they're doing that. I got no use for them. I got no use for them whatsoever. So, there are reasons why guys do turn around and give up information. Let me tell you something. Another, another, another bullshit story they had was, they're going to make you laugh with this one. If you wore a beard or a mustache that meant you was a rat. Well, you know what? <laughs> no, no, listen to me. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of names. Joe Valachi, all right? Jimmy Fratiano the Weasel. Now, just follow me what I'm saying. Sally Michiata. Anthony Russo from the Columbos, okay? Uh, there's so many guys. Oh, Frankie Lino. Joe Messina, the head of the, of the Bonanno family. Joe Messina's brother-in-law. These are just a couple that I'm mentioning. Every one of them became an informant, but guess what they all had in common? Not one of them ever had facial hair. <laughs> so how are you Funny. telling me a guy with a beard or a mustache, he's going to be a rat, when all the informants that you ever see throughout history, they were all clean shaven. They never had facial hair. Uh, well, Anthony, I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, quite a life. Uh, quite a life of ups and downs. Oh, it's, um, there's a lot more to it, believe me when I tell you. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, there's the whole Vatican story, which we didn't get into, which is going to be part of a documentary that you're working on. Yeah. You know, uh, as long as well as, uh, you know, the whole uh, Lufthansa heist and, um, you know, really uh, association. Well, there's with a lot there's of more to delve people. into with the, Lufthansa, with the Lufthansa heist about who fu who got rid of the jewelry and where we got rid of it and how the, the bonds were changed over and everything was washed. That's a, that's that's another story. Yeah, I bet. Well, uh, we'll have links to your book when the bullet hits the bone yes. uh, below. If you want to check it out, it's quite a read. Uh, you know, and I appreciate you sitting down. Uh, and my pleasure. You know, I got none. Yeah, man. Anytime uh, you, you want to interview best. me again, there's no problem with that. I got quite a few things. Absolutely. Well, I Anthony, think Michael. Michael. Time. I don't mean to interrupt, but I don't not to hop up. I think Michael might be mad at you because of what I'm saying. Because I corrected him on a couple of things. Uh, well, listen, uh, at the end of the day, whoever sits down in this chair has the right to say whatever they want. And, uh, you know. Oh, there's quite a few other things I could tell you about. But, you know, we could let that go for another time if you ever want to interview me again. Sure. Well, I have sure. other and stories. Michael's, Michael's always welcome to sit down and uh, and respond to you as well. Yeah, he can sit down with me together. We could, I'll sit down with him together. I don't care. Sure, sure. I mean, I mean, at one point we interviewed Ori uh, Spado, who said a few things about Michael, and then Michael responded and, and so forth. So yeah. You know, at the end of the day, everyone has their own point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, every situation has multiple yeah. angles. 
Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people are allowed to say their piece. Yeah, well, I got uh, things in book two that if you ever interview me again, I can tell you about it because there's no problem with that. A lot of Great. other things. What is, bo what is book two coming out? Hopefully, it should be out between March and uh, June. Okay. And it picks up from where book one left off. But in book two, I go back to the Vatican. I give you the rest of the story on the Vatican and with the assassination of the Pope. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward There's to it. And a lot more to Anthony, it. Anthony, appreciate you coming in. My pleasure. Until next Thank time. you. Peace. Take care.